In this video, we're going to be walking through a subscriber comment and nine different examples uh, that were created in response to this comment. So the comment was, is it possible to send a single signal from one send signal action so that it can be received simultaneously by multiple accept event action elements? Basically, I'm trying to avoid creating multiple send signal actions for each receiver is this possible and compliant with the SysML UML standard? So we'll go ahead and look into example one, which is just the simple example where you have one send signal and one accept event. You'll see that it works as anticipated where the alpha signal is sent from here to here and the activity completes. This is not addressing the, the question of multiple accept events, but we will get there. For example two, you can see that we have a nested activity. Again, we only have one accept event action, not addressing his initial question, but you see that it does work as anticipated. The alpha signal can go across one activity into another activity so then that signal can be sent and received appropriately. Looking at example three, this is what he was referring to where you have multiple accept event actions, but only one uh, send action. When we see this and run this, you'll see that it does not work as anticipated. It just selects one of the three accept event actions and moves forward. It doesn't actually uh, it, it hit this alpha or this alpha. You'll see that if I run it again, it may select a different alpha to send to. So this time it decided to send it to the second one. I cannot give you an answer as to why this is the case. I think it's a cameo simulation quirk um, that we just need to understand and be able to work around. So one simple workaround would be this example right here, where you just add additional fork and join nodes so that you only have one accept event action. You'll see that this is going to do the same thing, but it actually works appropriately. Looking at example four, when we run this in simulation, we'll notice that we hit the send before we hit the receive. So therefore, it actually never is able to pass that signal because the accept event action was not active when the send signal action was sent. So you get stuck here. So the fix is to ensure that your accept event action is active before your send signal is sent. So we'll just run this guy. And you see it, it works as intended. Now moving on to example five, where we're going to add structure and it's going to get a little bit more complex. So we have our system of interest with our two subsystems. We have our internal block diagram with a connector connecting subsystem A and B. When we run the system block, it's going to run both the behavior and the structure at the same time, which is going to allow that signal to be sent from subsystem A activity to subsystem B activity. So to replay that one more time, you see that this alpha signal goes across from subsystem A to subsystem B over this connector, and um, it works as anticipated. Now moving on to example six, where we're actually having multiple or three different accept event actions. We'll run this just like before, and it works asterisk kind of. 
you'll notice that because we have three connectors here, we will be sending the alpha signal from subsystem A to each of the other subsystems. However, it does send the alpha signal three separate times. So you're getting alpha sent to subsystem B three times, alpha sent to subsystem C three times, and alpha sent to subsystem D three times. So there's one, there's two, and there's three. So it works, but not really as intended. The way to resolve this issue of sending three times would be adding ports, which we'll go over in example seven. But just before that, I'm going to bring up a very important modeling thing, and that is that you must have these behaviors, these activities as the classifying behavior to the blocks. Right now, this example 6b does not have them as the classifying behavior. And for when I run this and push play, you see that no behaviors are actually running. So to get to that, I would just click on the block and go down to properties. I would just type in classifying behavior and you'll see that it is empty right here. So I'll click on B, C, and D and they're all empty. So to fix this, I click on it one time and I click on classifier behavior and you see that subsystem A is one that is available on the dropdown. It's available on the dropdown because it lives underneath the context of the subsystem A block. So what I'm going to do is go back to my subsystem A and I'll type in classifying behavior and then I'll add subsystem A. So now subsystem A is the classifying behavior of subsystem A and I'll do this for all, all four of them. So I'm just going to do it for one so that you can see what it looks like. When I push play, you'll see that only this activity runs. These other three for B, C, and D do not run. You see it running right here. Um, so that's just an important note is to ensure that your blocks have a classifying behavior. To example seven. So this one, we've added a proxy port to our subsystem A and we're going to run it because we want it to go over this. But this one does not work because we're not actually specified yet uh, what port we're going to send it over. So if you have not specified it, you'll see that it just goes through that but doesn't send it and you don't see the signal go over here. So this is the fixed version, the 7B that I'm clicked on now. And you'll see that the one difference is that it says alpha via P1. This via P1 is what allows me to go and send it across this port. So when I run this now, I'll resize it so you can see it a little better. Run the system block. Alpha via P1, it sends it over these connectors. You notice that it sends it only one time as anticipated. So this is really the entire solution. The way that we add the via P1 to this send signal action is I can go in here, I go into the specification, and you'll see this on port. This on port is where I would go in and I'm going to determine or select what port it is that I'm trying to send that signal over. And I'm sending it over this port. And so that's going to be your solution. Example eight is another example where you can have it separated. So you can send the alpha signal just to subsystem B and C, and uh, then later send it uh, over the P2. And we'll just see that right here. So it sends it just to B and C, and then later it sends it to uh, subsystem D. So for example nine, 
Let's imagine that this is the internal block diagram, which cannot change, i.e. Th these connectors are connected as shown here. But we don't want subsystem C to continue on with the path upon receiving the alpha signal from P1. We only want the alpha signal to be accepted if it's coming from P2. So as it is right now, if I run it, you'll see that it incorrectly accepts the alpha signal from this P1 and moves forward. However, we want it to only move forward if it accepts it from the P2 port. So we're going to show that how that works in 9B. So the thing that we've added is that it has alpha from P2. And that is this port right here. So it's not going to accept the alpha signal because it's not going through this port. But when it gets the alpha signal through this port, it will accept it. So we'll run that just to show that. So there's the first one that wasn't received and the second one was received. So that's how it works. So to add this, you go into the specification and you'll go the trigger underneath trigger. You've got port and this is what you're going to specify exactly what port you're going to only receive the signal through. We hope you enjoyed the video. You will be able to find this MD zip project file on our website if you'd like to see it. Uh, leave comments and questions below. Thank you.